Hey, what's up, everybody? Here in uh, uh, cloudy Durham, North Carolina. It's a nice day. It's beautiful. We're going to be talking about stuff that uh, I personally care a lot about today. Uh, I do want to let you guys know that we did get some more Viper Classics in. We were out of stock on Viper Classics, but we are no longer out of stock on Viper Classics. Woo woo. Um, and uh, man, it's so disappointing for me, really, but I'm going to have to test all those things out before we hang them on the wall. So, gosh, I guess I have to play some Vipers today. What a disappointment. Um, so, yeah, our topic today, we're going to be talking about another thing I'm super passionate about, the Line 6 Helix. Hel I can't even say it. How passionate can I be about something I can't even say? The Helix HX Stomp. Um, I've been a Line 6 user for, gosh, many years. Many years. Since most of you guys were born, I've probably have been using uh, Line 6 stuff. And uh, it just, it's roadworthy. It does, it sounds good. It doesn't break. And, uh, and it sounds good and it doesn't break. Rob Flax is here. What's up, buddy? Yeah, life is full of little and big challenges. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a hard life. Um, somebody's got to do it, though. So, yeah, we'll be talking about the HX Stomp. I'm going to be playing through one. I will show you one. We just got some into the shop, which is why we're talking about this. Um, there's a whole family of products, actually, in this Helix family, and we'll talk about all of those uh, in a little bit. But, yeah, just basically the idea behind the HX Stomp is that here's a picture of it. It's a little tiny multi-effects unit, and um, they're $5.99 super 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 programmable and uh, they can do pretty much anything that your imagination can uh, can imagine that was a poorly crafted sentence um, so yeah it's you're pretty much limited by your your ability to program the thing and they're really pretty easy to program um, we'll talk about some of the resources that are available out there too um, so that's the unit it's um I would say, so how would I compare this to like maybe the flagship multi-effects processor that we that we tell everybody about? We tell people about the Boss ME80 because it's super easy to use, it's super flexible, it sounds good. This is uh, roughly twice the price. Uh, the Boss ME80 is about 300 bucks. This is about 600 bucks. It's about twice the price. It's probably got 100 times the power and flexibility though. I mean, it, I'm not kidding you when I tell you, what does this thing have in it? On the little scrolling thing underneath, you can see all this. There are 17 reverbs, 35 delays. There's an IR reader in here. There's 39 different distortion pedals, 15 compressors, 5 EQs, 45 modulation effects, 28 filters, 10 watt pedals, 74 different amp models. There are 37 cabinet models. There's 16 microphones in this thing. It's insane. How much stuff line six is put into here um, there there are some uh, some of these are available in mono and stereo um, and there are also so some of these like some of these distortions that are in there some of them are original line six creations and some of them are models of say like a uh, uh, like an, a, a turbo stomp or uh, what's the Ibanez the turbo uh, the uh, tube screamer gosh I'm looking at a screen and my brain turns to mush. Um, so like these, there will be models of actual pedals and models of actual compressors and models of actual amplifiers. And then there are also, um, there are also some line six creations in there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the deal. And you can put them in any order you want and you can edit any of the parameters. If it's, if they're modeling it after an actual stomp box, then all of the parameters that were on that actual stomp box, you can control in the Helix. So, um, yeah. So the difference between the Helix and the HX stomp, let's, um, let's flip through and look at this real quickly. There we go. So the difference between the HX stomp and the, the Helix LT and Helix Floor, as you see some different pricing on there. Um, it's, it's size between the HX Stomp, which is little, and then the LT and the Floor are, are big. They've got a lot more buttons on them. So if you've got a lot of, 
if you're doing a lot of tap dancing in your show, say you're clicking on a lot of uh, stomp boxes or you're flipping back and forth between a lot of presets, if it's a ground-based gig, you're on a bus or a truck or you're driving there in your car and you don't really care if your pedal board's a little bit bigger, uh, has a built-in expression pedal, then maybe one of the bigger ones, the LT or the floor, are better for you. But the, uh, the stomp, I feel like, um, is just super... Here we go, let's go back to this screen. Um, it's small, it's got three buttons on it. You can set them, you can actually set them up to do a number of different things. You can put it in a mode where each one of the foot switches is a stomp box. So if I've got three different stomp boxes in my, in my preset, I can click on and off each of those stomp boxes. Uh, I generally have mine set up where I've got presets built and I can go up and down in the presets. Um, and I can also set it up to go up and down in the snapshots. And what a snapshot is in the Helix world is you've got one rig, right, with your amp and all your pedals in there. And then you can build, I don't know, 16 or 18 snapshots, which are basically you go through and you change all the parameters in that rig to what you want it to be. And then you like take a snapshot of that. And then you can turn down the bass and turn up the reverb and turn down the delay and turn up the flanger or whatever. You change that rig, boom, there's another snapshot. So if, as long as the rig doesn't change, like the amp and the pedals doesn't change, then inside there you can go different snapshots. So a preset is actually a whole new rig. So I might have one preset with a Friedman amp in it and one preset that's set up for my acoustic violin or one set up that's, you know, it's got six flangers in it or whatever. Um, yeah, Rob Flack, it's, a, it's an incredible value. I'm, I meant to look up, somebody did the math on, if you were to buy all of the amps and pedals and compressors and stuff that are in this, uh, in this box, you know, you're looking at, you know, 200 grand or something to buy all that. Now, you're not gonna buy 40 amplifiers or whatever it is. Well, maybe you would, I don't know. Um, you're not gonna buy 17 reverb pedals, I hope. Um, but the nice thing is I've got them. And there's uh, there's a compressor in there, a compressor model. It's based on like a $3,000 tube compressor. And you know, to the best of their ability to emulate exactly how that compressor reacts and sounds, um, you basically have a $3,000 compressor at your foot um, along with everything else. So all that to say, that's play, huh? Um, yes. So I've got the, uh, I've got my HX stomp sitting here and you can see I've got an acoustic violin sound on there. Hope you guys can all see that. And uh, so I've got a direct, I've got a line run directly out of the Helix into the interface that you can hear. And then of course the microphone is open in a room, which is why you can hear me talk. Uh, so you're hearing, Mostly direct, but you're also hearing a little bit of the rim, okay? So. Okay, so let's see, gosh, what's in here? Let's go over. Well, we've got an IR reader here, and you can see that I've got a, a French violin um, <clears throat> IR in there. So let's just hear that. So let's look and see what we got. That's, I've got these three knobs here that allow me to do some real-time control. Uh, I can select which IR I have, and so I can flip through some of these different IRs that are in here. Um, I've got a low cut that I can actually say, well, gosh, I really want to dial out some of the lows in there, so I can run that up. I've got a high cut, which means I can cut some of the highs out of there. All that within this one control. Um, and then I can turn up the mix. That was at 50%. Gosh, for fun, let's just turn that up to 100 and hear what it sounds like. With that, uh, with that IR. So 
So there's the IR in there. And that was fun, but let's shut that off. So I click this button and it shuts that off. Um, go back to my view here. And then let's, so let's come over and see what's next. Okay, reverb. We said there's, uh, I don't know, I don't even remember the number, 17 reverbs or something in here. Let's play. So these are what we would call the legacy reverbs. So you can see there's mono, stereo, and legacy. Legacy means that these are sounds that they developed for the old HD 500 and 500 X. So all of those old sounds, if you had a, uh, if you had a 500 or 500 X, which I did, um, somebody post an angry emoji. That's hilarious. Whoever's angry at this just needs to <laughs> go eat some ice cream or something. Um, so yeah, the legacy effects are here from the old HD 500 series. I'm running in mono right now. Um, so let's check some different reverbs. That's glorious. Here's another one. It's kind of generally how I check my reverbs. I'll hit it with a little transient. A lot of times I'll just chop. You can hear it. Um, but I have a bow in my hand, so I'll just do like the little quick pluck thing. You can hear it. Um, next one. That's fun. Ooh, that one's got some... Let's play with that one. So let's see what we got. We've got decay set, the pre-delay. What a pre-delay does on a reverb is it pushes you forward or back in the room. Okay, so the pre-delay is how long does your, wow, that's in and out of focus. Stop that. Um, so it's how long do your dry signal comes through before the room or the delay starts to act. So if we want to push this pre-delay way out, let's push this thing way out just for fun. Let's run it up. You can actually hear the delay or you can hear the reverb kick in after. So let's run it back to something reasonable. So, but but what the pre-delay does basically pushes you forward in the room and the and the reverb back. Um, tone, you know what tone is? Uh, the mod that's in there. Well, let's hear. Let's run that down just for fun. And let's run it back up just for fun. You know why not? Okay, I hear what that does. That's fine. Um, mix is how much of, you know, I can run that down and there's less reverb, more dry. Let's keep it at 50, that's fine. How loud is it? I can actually turn the whole overall volume up and down. Um, so there's, there's, a, there's two pitches in here. One, they've got an octave down and no sense. It ain't got no sense, so it's not tuned. It's not detuned any. Then there's a, a second pitch, um, which is up an octave and not detuned. Uh, and then there's a pitch mix. And then trails means that if I kick this, if I if I'm doing a thing where I kick the uh, that effect off, does it just die immediately or does it trail out? So you can decide if the trails stay on or off. But just you know. be fun right we could play with that some all right let's try a different one a double tank Ooh, that's groovy kind of some weird detune stuff in there. I don't know if I like that. It makes me sound like I'm playing out of tune. Or I can just blame that instead of myself. Um, 
All right, so that's for these. And let's go look at some of these legacy ones. Sort of a plate reverb. Room, you can hear it, a real small room. Chambers dinging a little more. Hall's a little bigger. Echo. It's cool. Tile, cake. I like that. A ducking reverb. Let's play with this. Let's play with this ducking thing. So, hey, what's up, Stephen? So, how does how does a ducking reverb work? Does anybody know how a ducking or a, a reverb or delay works? Um, it's very silly. You guys can't really answer me in real time. So, the way it works is if you want the um, if you want the reverb to really ring out when you're done playing but you don't want it to be swallowing you up while you are playing, then that's the thing. If your signal is blasting into there nice and hard, then the reverb stays pushed down. And as soon as you stop, then it starts to ring, which is nice. It ducks. Yeah, duck it all. See how it's pretty washy there? It's nice. We can push that decay out. Um, Got a low cut at about 200 hertz. Let's turn that down some. Give a little more beef. High cut. Let's actually make that a little more shimmery. Push the mix up some. Turn those trails on. So we got we got quite a bit of verb here, right? Which is nice because when I'm playing, it's not in the way. But as soon as I stop, you got a nice ring. Kind of cool. Uh, I like that. So let's see what else we got. There's a octoverb. I actually use a lot of this in um, in some pad sounds that I mess with. That's fun. Uh, some spring reverbs, which are really, there's a 63 spring and a regular spring that uh, you know I use more on my sort of distortion sounds. And then this particle verb, oh, I love this sound. Here at Bloomin'. So let's, uh, let's go back and let's actually mess with my particle verb setup. So you can also go to multiple paths. You can see where I've got the path across the top, and then I've got a bypass path underneath. What I've done is I've put the volume pedal in the bypass so I can turn my, so that my signal is always going through the bottom. It's always going through the reverb. So there's always going to be reverb, but then on top I can decide whether any dry signal comes through or not. So let's play with that. Right, but we can turn the dry signal off, which I'm doing with my foot right now. So just, and now you're hearing me through the mic here, but if, uh, let's turn that mic off so that doesn't happen. Here goes the mic, I'm going away, bye bye bye. So you can hear that there's no dry sound coming through at all. It's just that washy reverb. All of these are things that you can do just from simple programming in here that you can't do on other pedals. That's, that's relatively difficult to do on most pedals, especially most, um, especially most uh, what would we say, uh, multi-effects pedals. It's really hard to do uh, or impossible. So... Let's go back here. Um, so that's that's just pushing through and talking about some reverbs. That's only reverbs. Okay, there's just as much flexibility. Um, let's go over and look at a delay pedal. Here's let's click the delay on. There's a delay. 
Let's look at how many delays there are. I really like that duck delay. It's the same thing as the uh, as the uh, the duck reverb. When you're playing, it's sort of down there. <laughs> So, uh, is this a Zeta? Yes, sir, it is. It was hanging on the wall, so I grabbed it. Um, so, yeah, the duck delay is kind of cool because it's not, it doesn't mess up, it doesn't like swallow up your playing, but as soon as you stop, you get that nice delay effect. Fun. Uh, there's a reverse delay. This is fun. That, that's a Rob Flax sound right there. There's a vintage digital. Vintage swell. It's kind of fun. Ooh. That's good times. You can you can, so, okay so let's go back to the reverse Rob was asking let's pick that all right so I can in my time here I can either go with syncing it to my tap tempo or I can click this and put in a, a time so that's one second I can change the feedback I can change the low cut the high cut the mix the level the mod Let's see what happens there. Oh, there's different mods in here. Woo a chorus. And a vibrato. And I can change the speed of that mod. And change the depth of it. Um, yeah, good times. We can turn the uh, trails on and off. So. That was fun. Turn that off. Let's turn this back on and go back to some of these other ones. Transistor tape. It's kind of got that warbly tape sound to it. Let's play with that one because we can. Here's your times 500 milliseconds more or less. The feedback, the, the wow flutter. Yeah, you can hear that flutter in there. There's a mix. Let's turn the mix up. Headroom which is how hard we're saturating that tape. You can really hear that. All right, there's a, here's another delay. That's cool. Brigade, so um, yeah, it's just tons of delays in here. And keep in mind that these are all in mono. This pedal will also do digital or uh, digital what a, mono versus digital. What a moron! Um, mono versus stereo. Oh, crappers. Uh, Bawan, I don't, you, I guess that means you're in Germany. I don't speak German, only English and Spanish. Um, but uh, Wilkemann. So, ooh, that one's fun. See, what does this do? This has got some different mods. That's fun. this delay stuff that's fun though um all right shut that off what's next 
EQ. Yeah, there's a bunch of different EQs in here, so let's look at those. There's simple EQ, which means low, mid, uh, frequency, and gain. High gain and level, so that's just a simple three band. Um, low and high cut, which you generally will have in any of your other EQs too. Um, fully parametric. So I've got my low frequency Q and gain. Next frequency Q and gain. Next frequency Q and gain. And then high and low cut. Okay, that's cool. Um, 10 band graphic EQ. Look at me. So these are set uh, frequencies, 31.25, 60.5, 125, all of, your, uh, all of your octave bands in here. And you can treat it just like a graphic equalizer. Um, there's a CaliQ graphic, which I'm sure is based on some very famous EQ that I don't know anything about. Um, yeah, so those are the EQs in there. My goodness, like five different EQs is kind of cool if you're an EQ guy. Um, see what's next um, oh yeah there's 10 different wah pedals let's play with some wah pedals but let's do it this way let's go up oops I'm flipping through my presets here I don't like playing old wah pedals on a uh... let's see if I've got a wah pedal in this distortion sound yes I do <laughs> this pedal only for MIDI user or normal boosting. So, you, um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Maybe somebody can help me figure out. Um, there we go. That's a Bogner amp model. Now let's kick in some wah. Woohoo! <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, MIDI. Um, so we'll talk about MIDI in just a second. No, this does not work with MIDI violins, but it does allow MIDI uh, control in and out. Um, so if you want to use this to control some of your other devices, you can, or you can use one of your other devices to control this. Um, I actually know of some big touring acts where the guys have helices, helix is, helices, helicin, like oxen, helicin. There we go. There's the plural of helis, helix, helicin. And they can all sync these things to Ableton. The drummer's driving Ableton with the click track and everything. When it goes to the chorus of this song, it sends a MIDI signal and everybody's pedal board changes tones if it needs to or it changes the, uh, the, the uh, what do you call it right here, your tap tempo. Um, so yes, it can take MIDI in or MIDI out, but it does not do um, like a MIDI violin, not, not what you're thinking, like make it sound like a saxophone. Uh, so no. Um, <laughs> All right, so there's one wah pedal. That's my favorite, the colorful wah. Let's go up and try some of these other ones. Let's try this one. Whoop, click that on. Try this one. You don't seem to be working. There we go, had it deactivated. That's fun. Let's try a different one. Chrome wah. Turn it on. So a bunch of different wads, and in each one you can control where your frequencies are, 
you can control positions. So if I want to say that I don't want heel down to be zero and, and toe down to be 100, I can set limits on those. Man, I only want it to be between 20 and 60% because, I, you know, this wad just, it, it's too wide, wide. We don't want it to be too wide, do we? It's crazy. Um, and then you can change the mix, which I love because sometimes I feel like the wide is too much. So let's wah a little less. Let's 60%. Price, $5.99. So very cheap. Um... All right, so here's a bunch of other presets in here. Uh, yeah, so we're back to this. That's for all the OCD people. So, yeah. Tons and tons of cool features on this. I don't know how many you guys want to get into, but we'll uh, sort of go back where I think we've had some new people come in. And we'll uh, we'll just go through all the different things this thing can do. Again, 17 different reverbs, 35 delays. It's got an IR reader if you want to use that for like a violin body impulse or if you want to use it for speakers, a speaker impulse. A bunch of distortions, 15 compressors, 5 EQs, 45 modulation effects. Actually, we'll do a couple of those for Rob. 28 filters, 10 wah pedals, 74 amp models, 37 cabinets, 16 microphones. Um, so in India, uh, can you get it? Yes, you can. We do ship to India. As far as pricing, you would have to Google that, just like I do, uh, and see what the what the uh, conversion is from uh, dollars to rupees. And then also for shipping, if you go to our website, if you go to electricviolinshop.com and you put the item in your shopping cart and you go to check out, you can, this is before you pay, you can put in your address and it will calculate shipping cost. Um, so there. Um, what was I going to do next? I forgot. I got all distracted. Oh, oh yeah. We're going to do some, uh, shut that off. Let's do some mods for Rob, because Rob's a cool guy. Here's some mods. Let's pick some of these. Here's a trim. Here's another trim. Another trim. Another trim. Uh, another trim. That's a fun one. Let's mess with that. So change the speed. We can change the, the, the wave. Saw down, saw up. Let's leave that as a square. See how many steps. Make that first step a three step. Then there's step two, four, and then eight, and then six. Yeah, that's fun. How much depth? You want to try a harmonic trim? All right, let's do that. So there's speed, intensity, um, duty cycle, bass frequency. Treble frequency, let's turn that a little higher. Level, mix, there we go. So there are a bunch of phasers in here too. A vibe sound. Some more phasers. Some flangers. A chorus. 
chorus, another chorus, another chorus, vibrato. I don't even know what this double take is. A ring mod, that's fun. So that's on that side. Let's go back to some of the legacy ones. Some more tremolos, a panner. If we're if we're in stereo, that's really cool. Some bias tremolo, opto tremolo. This is a fun one. Some more phasers. Pan phaser, especially if you're in stereo, that's pretty sweet. Barber pole phaser, a dual phaser. This actually has two phasers in it at once, and you can change your LFO shape. Um, if I have another phaser, pitch vibrato. If you're just too lazy to do vibrato, say you're playing Bach and you're not allowed to vibrato. Well, I'm not vibratoing. Don't be mad at me. I wasn't playing with vibrato. Um, a dimension, an analog chorus, tri chorus, some more flangers. Bop. Ooh. Another ring mod, a rotary drum, that's fun. Rotary drum with a horn. So, yeah, tons of stuff in here. Um, and then, just because we can, let's, uh, let's look at some filters. There's some pitch and synth stuff too. Uh, so this is going to be like a uh, like a um, does it have a Leslie organ sound in it? It has more or less. You can build one. So um, you could do it with with Octaverse and then a a Leslie. Yeah, you totally could. <laughs> So that filter is going to be like an auto wah. Uh, let's see. Synths, yes. Not a ton of synths just yet. Let me talk about one of the other cool things about the Helix. Um, the pitch whim is actually a, it's a, a whammy. Um, so it's got a generator. Uh, here's where synths are. Here's another one. That's a weird one. Actually, use this one quite a bit. That's a fun one. Um, 
So yes, let's see some of these questions that people are asking. Uh, how you manage live in concert? Yeah, good question. So you you would basically build presets. Um, say if you know you're gonna use these sounds on these songs, then you you just jump in there and you build your presets, and you know okay this song I use this sound, this song I use this sound, and then if you do want to do some tweaking, you set it up to where, when I come to my preset. I've got one of these pedals is already up on the screen. So I can do some tweaking right there. Or if I want to go to the next pedal over, I just come over in my rig, come over to where that pedal is, and I can adjust it. So all this can be adjusted live. It's not super, super, super easy to do, but it can be done. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of menu driving. Um, this one is set up, this is my fly rig. So this is what I use if I'm flying someplace. Most of the time, if I'm doing a fly date, gosh, I may only play 15 minutes. Um, so I'm, I'm doing one, two, three songs at the most, and I don't have a bunch of switching to do. Wow, that's really irritating me with the uh, focus in and out. Sorry, guys. Um, let's change that. Yeesh. Okay. <gasps> so... Um, so yeah, so you would set up your presets to um, to just be what you knew they needed to be for that show, and then you know you just flip through them. On on the bigger units uh, that have ten or twelve foot pedals, then you can do a lot more um, with your presets. Uh, what were some of the other questions here? Uh, the Eventide H9 is a really sweet unit too. It's just a little different from this. Sort of some different. Um, different aims and goals um, it does have a looper it sure does and in fact one of the cool things I think on this one where I would find the looper let's see if I remember where that is yeah it's just a one button looper on this one I have not updated this one I think the uh, the the more I have not updated this software. The new one, I think, has a two-button looper built into it. Um, so, um, and then the big ones, the floor model or the LT, I think, have a far more uh, sophisticated looper in them now. So I was going to say earlier, one of the really cool things about this is they are forever updating the software. They're adding new features. They're adding... Um, they're adding new amps, they're adding new reverbs, they're adding you know all these different things. Line 6 is a really, really customer responsive company. They've got a website set up where you can put ideas in and go, hey, you know what would be really awesome? Good pitch shifting, which is something the Helix does not have right now. It does have pitch shifting, it's not the greatest. Um, so a lot of people have been asking for good a good polyphonic pitch shifter. Why don't you just model a POG or model a, um, a pitch fork or something like that and put it in here because that's what they're, most of these are just, these are models of other pedals. Why not model a pitch fork, guys? Um, so they are working on it, that's coming. Apparently modeling pitch shifting is a lot harder than you would think because uh, they have been working on this for quite a while. But all the updates are free. So whenever they do an update, and it's every, I don't know, probably every four to six months they do an update, those updates are free. Um, so really, really cool. Let's look at I.O. on this thing for a second. Um, as you can see, it is true stereo. So it can do stereo in and stereo out. Or, like what I did uh, when I played with my friend Emmanuel in New York, uh, I used my Helix basically as a dual processor because it allows, it has two separate signal paths inside. There's path one and path two. So I can send my signal down one path and his signal down another. And then I just pan them coming out. Uh, I, I, I don't know, Mark. It's um, latency, two octave. I don't know. It's not great. Their pitch shifting isn't great just yet. Uh, it's coming. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't, if I was gonna do some real pitch shifting, like I want it to sound not fake, uh, I would use an external pedal for pitch shifting. And in fact, I do use an external pedal for pitch shifting. Um, so because it's got two ins and two outs and two separate signal paths inside, I can actually, um, I'm not sure if you can do that on this one. 
where let's let me look um, main input can I go I think I can I know on the bigger ones you can run two separate completely separate signal paths and um, this one I think may just be stereo and you could you could do some things differently and, and pan different ways um, I don't think I would actually try to use this one for two people uh, but the Helix Floor and Helix LT you can absolutely use for two people. Um, say you've got a, uh, I know there's a, a guy in a big country band that his wife is the singer and she plays guitar on one song a night. So there was no point in bringing along a special rig for her. They just have her guitar going through the B channel of his Helix and he just controls everything under his feet because she's out front. She's singing, she's the star. She didn't need to be messing with pedals and stuff. So he handles all of her pedals and all of her changes and wahs and all that stuff through his rig while she's playing. And then he can set up a preset to where his stuff just stays chunking where it was and then hers he's controlling with his feet. So there are multiple signal paths through here. Um, there's an expression pedal uh, input and output. Uh, this thing is a, um, it is an interface. So you see the USB connection on there. This can be your interface. It does have software to edit on a computer. The editing on this tiny screen, believe it or not, is pretty good. You guys were watching me do that. It's actually pretty simple. Um, on the computer is even more simple. Um, okay, so then you'll see, gosh, it's hard for me to do this when it's not reversed. Um, there's a send and return and an aux. So you could use your return as an aux in, or you can use it as a send and return, right? So it's a stereo send. Um, and then there's your MIDI controls on the other side and the headphone jack. So if you want to use this for practice, it's pretty awesome. Um, it's a pretty sweet little setup. Um, it's made by Line 6. And um, since some of you guys were missing the beginning, that's it. It's a Line 6, uh, 599 bucks, man. It's, it's crazy, crazy powerful for what you get. Um, and then also... The cool thing about this being hooked up to your computer by USB is that you can save and share all your presets. So I've got all my presets backed up. So if my if my thing crashes, I just download another. I just download all my stuff again. I actually have a set of presets, a pack of presets you can get for thirty bucks. You can send me an email info at mattbellviolinist.com and um, and I can sell you the presets. I email them to you. You dump them into your editor, they fall on here, and everything's cool. So um, that's kind of cool. You can also, if you're if you're traveling or something, and you can put all your presets on your laptop, and then you can backline a rig. So if you're if you're doing a fly date, say you're doing a, a week tour in Europe or something, and you don't want to mess with, gosh, what's voltages over there, and I have to transport this thing. I can put all my presets on my laptop. I just tell the sound company over there, I need a Helix. I'm in the Helix. I hook it up to my computer. In about two minutes, all my presets are on there. Everything, global EQ, everything that I've set. As far as I'm concerned, the Helix that's on the floor there is now no different than the one that I've got at home. That's pretty cool. Um, I actually did have an issue when the Helix LT first came out. Um, the Helix LT first came out, they had tried sort of an experimental design on their expression pedal. It sucked. It broke. They broke at a very high rate and one of mine broke. So I, I hit up my guy at line six. It was a Friday afternoon. So it was uh, maybe four o'clock in LA where, where he's at. He overnighted me a new one. It was sitting in my garage Saturday. Uh, I dumped all my presets onto it and I was off to a gig Saturday had no problem at all so line six I don't can't promise you they're gonna overnight you a rig every time uh, something goes wrong but their their customer service is outstanding and the nice thing is I didn't have to go through and reprogram all this stuff it's uh, it's all it's you know if you back it up it's all sitting there on your laptop so um, that's pretty sweet where are the violas they're over there on the viola wall uh, we do have a bunch of electric violas. Um, so that's what's going on with the Line 6 Helix. Man, I hope that this has been interesting for you guys. It is an outstanding, outstanding piece of gear. 
um, that I really, really, really like. Um, let me go through some. Uh, where were we going to go? Oh, yeah. So those are the other ones. I wanted to let you guys know hey, uh, that there is on Facebook, there is a forum called the Line 6 Helix Family User Group. There's like 28,000 people on there, believe it or not. Um, and any question that you've got about the Helix, you can ask on that forum. Those 28,000 people are all over the world. Even if you're curious at four o'clock in the morning, somebody somewhere is awake and can answer your question. Actually, the search function on there is fantastic because this forum's been up for quite a while. If you have a question about routing, hey, I would like to do this or that. Um, actually, uh, Timothy Huzz is an outstanding um, resource who's uh, on the Electric String Players forum as well. Uh, he's a Helix guy. I was asking him, I was like, Timothy, can I configure my expression pedal to go zero to 100 on one thing and 100 to zero on something else? So say I've got two different tones and I want to use my expression pedal to blend them together. He's like, yeah, man, it's easy. Here's how you do it. So all of this program, you can assign your expression pedal to literally anything. You can, you can assign your expression pedal to... Um, the volume output on your reverb unit, or I can say that I want it to be the speed on my tremolo. So I can speed up and slow down my tremolo um, with my expression pedal, or I could do it backwards, or I could say I want it to control three or four things at once. Uh, yes, all of those things can be done. I can say I want my expression pedal to control this and this and this and this all at the same time. And I want one of them to go to zero to 100, one of them to go 50 to zero, one of them to go, you know, so all if, if you can think it there's a really good chance that the helix can do it um, and it's really quite simple to program if you're having problems you can go to that forum on facebook and those people are super helpful in fact just go searching through the post history there's a it's pretty unlikely you're coming up with a question that nobody else has come up with so um see who's using helices helicin how, how do we decide to do this he lie, he lie. Um, who's using them? Uh, I'm using them. I'm not anybody, but Jesus Florido's using them. Rachel Grace is using them. Uh, Tina Guo, who tours with Hans Zimmer, she's using one. Um, i trying to think who else. Gosh, everybody. I think uh, Chuck Bontrager's got one, but Chuck Bontrager's got everything. Um, who else is using these things? So many, so many amazing players are using these things. Um, gosh, I'm going to forget somebody's name and I feel like a heel. Um, Patrick Contreras is using one. Uh, Shauna Tucker does not have one yet, but I'm working on that. Which expression <laughs> pedals are compatible with the HX Stomp? Uh, any expression pedal that has two inputs. Um, it's got to have a, a two input thing. There's there's one official one that comes from Monster uh, or Mission. I mean, um, uh, as far as how it feels under my yeah, Jacob's using one. As far as how it feels under my feet, I love the way it feels under my feet. But for me, uh, the reason I use the Stomp, I have a, a regular Helix floor. The HX Stomp is my fly rig. It, it goes in my backpack. And so when I'm flying somewhere, I just stick it in my carry-on. I don't have to worry about it. The um, Helices or Helixes. Yes, it can either be Helixes or Helices. <laughs> our, our resident published author here, Chris. Actually, is, Susie was the one who came up with Helices. I was like, wait, wait, that's right. I remember that from somewhere. I'm going with I'm going with the same rules as for oxen. It's Helixen. <laughs> um, so yeah, expression pedal. You can use any stereo expression pedal, and and it, of course it also has to have the clicker in here to switch it from because it, it goes as two, right? So if I do expression pedal one can be volume and then click the toe down and that can be wah, which is the way I usually do it. Or you could do reverb level or like I said, you can control anything with your expression pedal. Um, I would actually rather have one that's much smaller and much lighter because like I said, this is my fly rig. The expression pedal is as big as the whole pedal and it weighs twice as much as the pedal. Helix ear. Helixer would be like uh, that's now an IR verb in Spanish, and now so now you just you just helixed me um, to to helix would be uh, uh, cumbersome. Um, so yeah, so I hope that's uh, most of the questions you guys have.
Um, gosh, what else? I mean, these things, they are, they are insanely powerful. They sound incredible. They're forever updating them. Line 6's customer service is insanely good. Uh, I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't want one of these unless you're just not that cool. Um, I think I think Rob, I think that would work if it's a dual function. If it's a dual function um, expression pedal, I really you're the expert on those things. I really need to hit you up about one that's small and light that I could use as part of my fly rig. And uh, if you find me a good one, I might even swap you for this good one if you want to. Um, so yeah, whatever, whatever. If you guys have questions, you can dump them in the comments section, and I will do my best to answer those. You can find these helix. Helices. You can find them on our website, electricviolinshop.com. Let's see if that's up here. Oh, yeah, our YouTube channel. You can't find them on YouTube, but you can find a lot of good stuff there, including Rob's videos. Um, this is our website. You can come to electricviolinshop.com and find the helices. Um, how does a Boss GT1 compare? Um, it doesn't. <laughs> um, yeah, the GT1's a nice pedal, honestly. Um, and, and you'll probably find, if you're asking guitar players, you'll find, if guitar players are, are boss guys, they're going to love their boss pedal. Uh, if they're line six guys, they're going to love the line six pedal. Um, I, th I think you probably find they're, they're both good pedals. Uh, I happen to be a line six guy. I just like the line six stuff. Uh, my minor is actually in computer science. So I think a lot like a programmer. And this thing is just really, really intuitive to me, the way that it programs. Um, they have done, that has, sale has ended. That's an old screenshot, unfortunately. Um, so the, um, what was the other thing I was going to, oh, the double blind test. So they've done a bunch of double blind tests with guitar players where they'll tell them, okay, so there's a, uh, I don't know, pick, a, pick an amp. There's a, uh, there's, a, um, there's a matchless amp sitting in another room. We're going to plug you into that. And then there's a helix sitting in the other room. We're going to plug into that. You can't see because you're on the other side of a wall. Everything's coming through in, in your studio monitors. So there's an actual amp with a mic on it in one room. There's a helix in the other room. We've got an AB switch, and we're not telling you which one is which. Can you figure out which one is which? And the answer is no. They can't. Um, guitar players will go. There's a there's hundred videos like this on, on, uh, on YouTube. Guitar players are going back and forth, and they're trying all the little tricks they know to try to figure out, okay, this one's real, this one's fake. Uh, they cannot reliably tell the difference between the real amp and the, the Line 6 model. They, they just can't do it. Um, and in fact, in some of the cases where they'll say, um, yeah, I, I think this one's the real amp because it sounds better. In a lot of those cases, it's actually the Helix. Um, it's, it's more than 50% of the time when they say, this one sounds better, it's, it's usually the Helix that, uh, that they're hearing. Because the thing is, you don't realize that real amps have all these artifacts and stuff. And now they've, they've duplicated those artifacts the best they can, but some of those artifacts are undesirable. Um, Earl Manian is actually, he's not a Helix guy, but he is a, um, a Fractal guy, which is one of the competitors to Line 6. And, and he thinks he can get a better sound with his violin through the fractal than he can with an actual amp, just because the amp is designed for guitars. And because this thing is all digital, we can actually do things in this space that we can't do in the real space. Um, for an example, uh, I can put a tremolo pedal between the head and the cabinet of the amp. You can't really do that in real life. If you had a head and then came out of the head into a tremolo pedal, your tremolo pedal would explode uh, very spectacularly. Um, so there's a lot of things that we can do digitally that we can't do in real life. Um, and that's kind of cool too. So there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of flexibility here. So anyway, we have gone a long time. Uh, we're over an hour. So I can't believe all you guys are still here. Thanks for hanging out. Um, but I think I am going to go ahead and we'll go to YouTube again, to our website. And I'm going to call it. We'll see you guys next week.